a problem some of us have when we try very hard to do the right thing and see that others do not do the right thing is addressed in Luke chapter 18 verses 9 to 17. Jesus spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Then they also brought infants to him, that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him, and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly I say to you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share together these words of wisdom from Jesus. It's generally good to seek to do a good job and to be self-reliant. Natural wisdom says that the way to assess how well we're going is to compare ourselves with what other people are doing. But Paul tells us, he who compares himself with others is not wise. And the reason is simple. When I make an evaluation of myself compared to somebody else, then my evaluation is going to be biased. I'm not going to make a fair evaluation. I can always find fault with others, and I rarely find fault with myself. So consequently, I will think I'm doing pretty well. But the one that we need to keep our eyes on is the Lord Jesus himself. And as we get to know him, we realise that we continually fall short of the standard of God. As Paul taught the Romans, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But he went on in chapter 7 to say, The good that I want to do, I find I can't do. And the evil I don't want to do, I find myself doing. How do I address this? For the reality is that the more that we understand the character of God, the more we will be condemned by it. Let's recall Peter. Peter was an enthusiastic young man. He worked hard with his father at his fishing business and he had become a disciple of John the Baptist, being baptised by him. So much so that when Jesus was baptised, John the Baptist told Peter's friends, John and Peter's brother, Andrew, Behold the Lamb of God. And so Andrew and John had gone to follow Jesus and met him and spent the day with him and Andrew immediately got Peter And so Peter had spent time with Jesus and he knew he was diligent and keen to do the right thing by God. But before Jesus could really recruit Peter as one of his disciples, Peter had another experience. He'd been fishing and caught nothing, along with Andrew and James and John, and they were cleaning their nets when Jesus comes walking along the shore with a crowd of people. Jesus pauses at Peter's boat and borrows the boat, sits in the boat and addresses the people on the shore. And afterwards says to Peter, put out into the deep and catch some fish. And Peter's response was, Lord, we have laboured all night and caught nothing. He's just in the process of cleaning his nets and packing them up. But he does respect Jesus. And so he says, but at your command, We will do it. 
so he has absolutely no expectation of catching any fish, but to please Jesus, he does what Jesus asks. Well, when they are out in the deep and put the nets over, they catch an incredible number of fish so that the boat cannot hold them. And Peter has to call his friend John to bring out the second boat. And they fill both boats. They're nearly sinking. After dragging all this back in and looking at what has happened, Peter's response was, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Peter had done pretty well when he compared himself with many other people. But when he appreciates the holiness of God, he is broken. And Peter always remembered that sense of complete inadequacy before Jesus. So later he boasted of how even if everybody else left you, not me. And then he denied his Lord three times. There's no point for boasting before God. The Pharisee stood and prayed with himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and even as this tax collector. But the reality is he was. Even though he fasted twice a week, even though he gave tithes of all he possessed, he fell foul of the condemnation that Jesus had previously given the tax collectors. They do not have the love of God. They do not pursue justice and mercy. They love money and to be highly regarded by men. Whereas a tax collector who normally would be thought as the one who loved money, he is just conscious that in his position in life, he is guilty before God. He knows he's guilty. And so he humbles himself and asks God for mercy. God grants mercy but anyone who comes boasting of themselves, he can't help. We can't trust in ourselves or what we do. We must always trust in the Lord. That message is brought out when they bring infants to Jesus. Infants have no reputation. They have no standing. They are often overlooked and discarded, particularly by men in a society. The mothers wanted Jesus to bless the children. They brought their infants to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. This was a waste of time. These children can't understand anything. They can't be taught. They can't speak. They can't understand. And so they said, don't waste the master's time. But Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. He knew that in 20 years' time, the mothers would be able to say to their children, You know, I took you to Jesus when you were just a baby. And Jesus touched you. He prayed for you. And then the words of Jesus would have an impact on those lives, even if they could not remember the event themselves. These children would grow up with a respect and a fear of God a knowledge of God. And Jesus says, Assuredly, this is one of those really strong statements in the King James, Verily, verily, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. We don't stand before God justified by what we have done because though we may have done many things, we have also fallen short of many things. We have all sinned. We've all come short of the glory of God. And so, so we cannot trust in ourselves. We cannot trust in our riches. We cannot trust in our knowledge. We can only trust in the mercy of God. As Paul says, we dare not class ourselves or compare ourselves with those who commend themselves. But they, measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves, are not wise. Or as Jesus said, he who exalts himself will be humble. He who humbles himself will be exalted.